Hi everyone. In today's lesson, I'd like to take a look at how to solve equations involving logarithms. So in your notebook, please put down today's subtitle, which is Log Equations. To learn how to solve log equations efficiently, I would like to investigate three different cases of the different types of log equations that you will encounter. Let's start with the first case being we have a log on one side of the equal sign and no log on the other side of the equal sign. This particular case can be illustrated with the following. Suppose I have the equation log in base c of an unknown x is equal to n. And our job is to figure out what the x value is. So the big question is, how do we handle such a type of equation? It's actually a lot easier than you might think. All we have to do is go back to the most basic definition of what a log means. Log in base c of x is equal to n because we written it in exponential form, we get that c exponent to n gives back our x. And there we go. The x is isolated. And we accomplish this simply by relying on the definition of a log. Let's take a look at a few simple examples of this procedure in action. I would like to solve the log equation log in base 3 of 4x equals to 2. Solve for x. Well, resorting to our definition of a log, we can rewrite this in exponential format by saying that 3 exponent 2 should give us back our 4x. And now it just becomes a simple matter of isolating the x. Simplifying, we get that 9 is equal to 4x, and therefore x is equal to 9 over 4. See how easy it was to solve a case 1 type of log equation? For our next example, I would like to force you to think about a small issue that will come up in many log equations. So, in the next example, let's solve for x in the following. Log of base 2 of x minus 5 all over 4 equal to 4. The issue that you need to consider involves the object that you are quote-unquote logging. According to the restrictions placed on log expressions, this object can never be allowed to drop into the negative values. So, in other words, you must never forget to check the restrictions on the value of x. In this case, we always have to guarantee that x minus 5 all over 4 is larger than 0. So, working on that will give us x minus 5 larger than 0 times 4 is 0. And therefore, x must be larger than 5. Now that we've gotten the restrictions out of the way, let's go back to solving the actual equation. So, in our equation, going back to the definition of a log, states that 2 exponent 4 should be equal to the object that we were quote-unquote logging, the x minus 5 all over 4. Simplifying, we get that 16 is equal to x minus 5 all over 4. Continuing with our simplification, we get that 64 is equal to x minus 5, and therefore x is equal to 69. And this is a perfectly valid solution because it does not violate our restrictions. And that's all there is, ladies and gentlemen, to solving log equations of the type where you have log on one side of the equal sign and no log on the other side of the equal sign. Next, let's take a look at a case 2 type of log equation in which you have log on both sides of the equal sign. This can be illustrated in the following. Log base c of x is equal 
to log base C of Y, where the base C is identical on both sides of the equal sign. Well, since the bases are identical on both sides of the equal sign, then logically, all you really have to worry about is making sure that the objects that you are quote-unquote logging on both sides of the equal sign are identical. And basically, all you really end up doing is dropping the log. Let's take a look at a couple of examples to illustrate this procedure. Our first example will be a very easy one. Suppose I ask you to solve x in the following equation. Log base 2 of 3x is equal to log base 2 of 6. Well, since the bases are the same on both sides of the equal sign, all you really need to concern yourself with is making sure that the objects that you're quote-unquote logging are identical. So, this will give us that 3x is equal to 6. As you can see, in effect, we drop the logs. And that will give us an x value of 2. And we are done. Logically, the answer makes perfect sense. Because when you take the 2 and plug it back into the x, on the left side of the equal sign, you have log base 2 of 6, which is identical to the right side of the equal sign. Let's take a look at a more complicated example. Suppose I ask you to solve x in the following expression. Log of 4 plus log of x is equal to log of x plus 6. First, before you do anything, make sure you check the restrictions on this object and on this object. So we have to guarantee that x is larger than 0 and the x plus 6 is also larger than 0. Well, x larger than 0 is already done, but the x plus 6 larger than 0, that means that x must be larger than negative 6. With the restrictions out of the way, let's go back to solving for x. Now, word of warning, although this procedure basically just involves dropping the logs, you cannot drop the logs until you have made sure that you're left with only one log expression on the left and one log expression on the right. In this example, unfortunately, we have two log expressions on the left side of the equal sign, and we have one on the right. So, we have to do some cleaning up on the left-hand side. And, to accomplish that, you must rely on your laws of logs. So, log of 4 plus log of x, using our laws of logs, that can be combined into a single log expression, log of 4 multiplied by x. The right side was already okay. We have log of x plus 6. And now, that we have only a single log expression on the left and a single log expression on the right, we are free to drop them. So all we need to concern ourselves with is making sure that 4x is equal to x plus 6. Using your regular algebra, we get that 3x is equal to 6, therefore x is equal to 2. And this is a valid answer because it does not violate our restrictions. And finally, let's look at a case 3 type of log equation. The case where you start with no log on either side of the equal sign. And case 3 is perhaps the single most powerful case of solving a log equation. You'll see in a moment, this finally allows you to solve any missing exponent for any combination of base and power. To illustrate the procedure, Let's start with an expression that has no log on either side. So suppose that you start with an expression x equals to y. As you can see, no logs. And you'll see that you end up with a type of problem where you simply cannot use guess and test or mental math to figure out your missing exponent. 
In this case, you are perfectly allowed to simply introduce your own log to both sides of the equal sign. And to keep things simple, most people simply introduce log in base 10. Let's take a look at a couple of examples and you'll see right away how powerful a case 3 type of equation actually is. Now first example, here's a classic. Suppose I give you 2 exponent x is equal to 10. What is x? Well, this is a tough one to do through guess and test or through your mental math. So the easiest thing to do is introduce logs to both sides. We can say that log and default base 10 of 2x to the x is equal to log and again might as well just leave it in default base 10 of 10. And here is where the power happens. Thanks to the laws of logs, the exponent x can be removed from its present location and taken down to the numerator position. The right side, nothing changes. And now that the x is taken out from the exponent position and put into the numerator position, you can easily isolate the x. All we have to do is move the log 2 to the other side of the equal sign. So that will give us log of 10 divided by log of 2. And if you punch it into your calculator using your default log button, you'll get that x is around 3.32. And if you perform a little self-check, you will find that 2 exponent 3.32 does give us back a value that's extremely close to 10. Let's take a look at another example to illustrate the power of this procedure. Suppose I ask you to solve x in the following. 3 exponent x plus 1 is equal to 7. Well again, this is very hard to accomplish through simple guess and test or mental math. So, no logs on either side. Feel free to introduce log to both sides. This will give us log, and again, keep using the default log in base 10, of 3 exponent x plus 1 is equal to log of 7. And again, here comes the powerful part. The x plus 1 in the exponent position can be removed and put into the numerator position, thereby giving us x plus 1 multiplied by log of 3 is equal to log of 7. And now that the x has been brought down to the numerator position, we can isolate it. This gives us x plus 1 is equal to log of 7 divided by log of 3. And if you check your calculator, that will give us x plus 1 is approximately 1.77, therefore x is approximately 0 0.77. And if you were to check on the calculator, 3 exponent 1.77 does in fact give us a value very close to 7. And I hope these two examples clearly illustrate how powerful a case 3 type of procedure can be. And that's it ladies and gentlemen to dealing with the different types of log equations that you will encounter.